Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It is me, Jacob. Um, in today's video, I am going to be reviewing the new Halloween movie. But first, before we get into the review, I've vlogged the trip, seeing it opening day, October 18th. First showing 7, 7 p.m. And then also when there is, you know, the second time around where I've I seen it again. And then after, you know, we're done with that vlog thing, I'll get to the review. A spoiler review. You know, because it's been more than a week since the movie's been out. And unfortunately, if you guys haven't seen it, go see it before you watch this video. If you don't want to be disappointed with spoilers. So, here's the vlog. What is up guys, um, today I'm going to basically be vlogging my uh, trip to go see the new Halloween movie because they're showing it a day earlier. Uh, it's supposed to come out October 19th, but I looked at the showings and my uh, two theaters around my my house have it for 7 p.m. 7 p.m. and I'm going to catch that showing because I've been saying in most of my vlogs that I was going to see the first showing the first day it's released. I plan to keep that promise. And, you know, since I've been waiting nine years, since all of us have been waiting nine years for this new one, you know, I feel like this is a time that I don't want to forget. Um, I've, I've tried vlogging before. It just doesn't work. I, I, you know, I tried vlogging when I went to go see Slayer and back in August. And I only got, like, two minutes of footage just because I'm not interesting at all. But, I'm honestly more excited to see Halloween than I was to see Slayer. Because I fucking love Michael Myers. I've loved him ever since I was like five years old. So, this is just going to be special. And, yeah. I'm just going to take you through the whole day leading up until 7 o'clock. So, right now, basically what I'm doing is I'm going to go over to uh, AMC. It's the theater that's closest to my house. I don't really want to go see it there. I want to go see it in Tracy. Because they have luxury recliners. And that's honestly the thing that I've been, like, talking to my parents about. All my friends and shit. They're like, why the fuck do you want to go see it in Tracy? I mean, I've been waiting for this movie for so fucking long. That if I'm going to go see it, I want to watch it in luxury. You know, sit on my ass and be comfortable. So, pretty much just what I'm doing is uh, just going there. See if the po they have, like, the poster displayed. And just, like, just see if it, just see, like, what time I can, like, buy my fucking ticket. So, yeah, I'll resume when I get there. Fuck yeah! Okay, so that means that they're definitely fucking prepared to show it. I just don't know if they're gonna show it today. Um, I'm gonna check it out right now. So yeah, that's that's pretty fucking cool. So they have the poster and everything. That was, that was pretty damn cool to see after nine years of waiting. Um, so I'm probably gonna travel to Tracy right now and buy my ticket. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> We're here, motherfuckers. Pulling into the theater right now. I got that one with me. And, uh, yeah, I fucking bought my ticket at 3.45. It's 6.18, so I'm getting to the theater almost, like, an hour early. It's a green light, and they're stopping. So, yeah, I'll, I'll let you guys know my thoughts. I'm happy, almost wet. So, yeah, <laughs> see you guys after the movie. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> I can't even fucking talk on camera. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm literally texting all my contacts about how awesome the movie was. <laughs> so yeah, it was... It was it was an okay movie. <laughs> oh, oh my god, <laughs> the movie was fucking awesome. <laughs> I, I can't, I'm literally like lost for words right now. <laughs> so yeah, I cried. <laughs> I cried a little bit, and I don't want to say anything because all I could say is just the fucking movie, and I don't want to spoil it. So I'll do a spoiler review tomorrow. <laughs> and yeah, all I can say is the uh, ten out of ten. Eleven Great out of ten. Fucking movie. Yeah. 31 out of how 31 <laughs> out of 10. They're keeping in the Halloween spirit. Justin but, told me to chill. Oh, so fucking good. Definitely go watch it. Ah, fuck. <laughs> so here we go. Here's the review. Now, I was uh, intending to do the review you know, the day after I saw the movie, which would have been, like, the worldwide release of Halloween. But I was I was really overwhelmed, and my thoughts just weren't there completely for me to be able to give a, you know, a good review. So I saw it the second time, and, you know, sort of the same thing. And then I saw it a third time. And then after that third time, I just decided, you know what, I'm going to let it sink in. Let it sink in and just think. Just think about what I'm going to say. And I actually have notes of what I'm going to talk about because I actually want to give a pretty good review. And I tried filming this review already and I, I, I said I was going to talk about the plot a little bit, not like describe the whole movie in detail. And that's exactly what I ended up fucking doing. So, what I'm going to do is just pretty much what you saw on Wikipedia before the movie came out. I'm just going to summarize it a little bit. Now you know what's going on. So, here we go. This is the official review from me of Halloween 2018. A review that was supposed to be release one week after after the movie was out but you know since I knew the thing about it saving it for Halloween like I should have it works out better that way so Halloween 2018 directed by David Gordon Green written by Danny McBride David Gordon Green and their friend Jeff I don't really know his last name all I all my focus was was on David Gordon Green and Danny McBride. So, first off, you're probably wondering, did I like the film? I'll get into that at the end. I have a list that I'm going to be going through. That way I keep it organized and I'm not all over the place. So pretty much, the plot of the movie is, you know, 40 years before this movie takes place is the ending to Halloween the very first one you know and uh, shortly after Michael Myers is shot off the balcony he's taken into custody and is placed back in the Smith Grove Sanitarium and for 40 years he's uh, been waiting and Laurie Strode from the first one also uh, portrayed once again by Jamie Lee Curtis has been mentally and mentally and physically preparing for his inevitable return. So, due to like her obsession with Michael Myers and her preparation for when he escapes, she also had a daughter, and that daughter, Karen Strode, had a granddaughter, or had a daughter, which is Lori's granddaughter, which is named Allison. Unfortunately, you know, due to Laurie Strode's intense preparation, she unfortunately lost her daughter. Uh, Child Protective Services took her away. And uh, 
that's obviously scarred her. But yeah, she's ready. She's ready for when Michael Myers comes back, and I kind of think that's pretty badass. Because in each show, she's, you know, a lot of people like to say that she was a badass in that one too, but that was only in like the final, say like 20 minutes of the movie. In this one, she's badass from start to finish, and you really feel her pain. But at least she's prepared, and you know, obviously Michael Myers does escape, because if he's transferred successfully, we wouldn't have a fucking movie. So, Michael Myers escapes, and starts killing off random people, which is one thing that I really liked about this movie, you know, that they kind of, you know, crossed out the brother-sister element. Because my, Michael Myers is scary. Again, you know, rather than killing people that is in the way of Laurie Schrode, he's literally going house to house and fucking murdering people, which is great. So, you know, news of Michael Myers' escape, you know, starts reaching Haddonfield, and... Lori Shiro finds out that the bus crashed that he was being transferred in. And she starts preparing. She starts, you know, she goes to her granddaughter's house, or she goes to her daughter's house and you know, pretty much tells her, criticizes her for lack of security, you know, lack of uh, preparation. And while this is all happening, Michael Myers steals a jumpsuit and kills two British podcasters that were, or investigative journalists, that were doing research on him. Which is a really good scene. It's really badass. And he finds his mask, just like this one right here. Finds his mask in the back of the trunk, puts it on, all geared up. So, Halloween night comes on. Lori's obviously, like, trying her hardest to protect the town of Haddonfield and her daughter and granddaughter. And then Michael eventually finds Lori and that's where the final confrontation comes in. So that's pretty much the plot in a nutshell. You know, I don't want to get too much into it because I spent 30 minutes talking about it. So the characters. Michael Myers is played by James Hugh Courtney in this film. Nick Castle only makes a cameo. 99% of the movie is James G. Courtney. The only scene that you see of Nick Castle is in the window, doing his iconic head tilt, which is, you know, really nice. But for the majority of the film, it's James G. Courtney, and I think James G. Courtney is the best Michael Myers since Nick Castle and Dick Warlock. I maybe even like James G. Courtney a little more than Dick Warlock. And that's, that's saying a lot because Dick Warlock was my favorite. <clears throat> so, Michael Myers in this movie is just pure fucking evil. He doesn't have a sister to hunt down. A lot of people are saying, oh yeah, if they're not related, why is he hunting her down? I'll just put it this way. It wasn't. It wasn't at first. Because if he was, then his focus would be, be straight finding Lori. But no, he's going house to house, clobbering people with hammers, sticking knives through people's necks. And he wouldn't have done that if uh, him, and, him and Lori related. And then you also have Lori Schrode, who, like I said, you know, has been suffering with PTSD and been preparing mentally and physically you know, for Michael Myers' role, like, escape. And her role, Jamie Lee Curtis's role in this film is amazing. She, like, dis she delivers such a raw and emotional performance. And, you know, like, I really felt for her. Like, I, I could, like, feel her pain. Like, you know, what, like, your friend's dying, your best friend's dying, and you nearly facing the same fate as them. You know, it, that, that breaks someone. 
a lot of people are saying, you know, oh yeah, she would have gotten over it. Well, the thing is, not everyone's the same. People react, will react to different things differently. And, honestly, I have no problem with the whole preparation angle. But yeah, she's obviously trying to protect uh, her daughter and her granddaughter, which the daughter is Karen, played by Judy Greer. And personally, I wasn't really a fan of Judy Greer's performance up until the final scenes. And I don't know, out of all the characters in this movie, her acting just seemed kind of the worst to me. Then you have uh, Andy Matichak. I, I always have a hard time like getting that name. She's uh, the granddaughter of Laurie Schrode. And I really liked her. I, I liked her performance a lot. You know, she has, like, a lot of elements of 78 Laurie Schrode. But she also has her own identity. And she, she just delivered. Like, she's smart and somewhat self-aware. And I, I was just... I was happy to see her in this film. She's, I didn't really know her, you know, from anything else rather than Orange is the New Black. But, you know, I'm definitely a fan of her performance in this movie, and I'm a fan of her as an actress now. And you have, uh, Toby Huss as Ray, Karen's husband. This dude, pretty much only there for comic relief and only there to die. There's one line in the film... It's like his first lines, he's uh, setting a peanut butter trap, a mouse trap, and then it snaps on him. And then just like out of nowhere, he's like, ah, oh, damn it, I got peanut butter on my penis. It's just like shit like that, it made me fucking laugh. Like, yeah, I know it's like it really like in their line, but it fucking, it worked for me. It made me laugh. But other than that, yeah, he's just there for comedic purposes. And honestly, I have no problem with it. <laughs> he made me laugh, you know. I didn't feel like his jokes were, like, pushed, but they were definitely thrown in there, and I found it funny. Then you have Vicky, which is Allison's best friend. She's, to me, she's kind of a blend of Annie and Linda from Halloween, first Halloween. And honestly, I, I liked her character too. Like, she felt like a blend of those two, but also she had her own identity. It didn't really feel like a copy. So, yeah, I liked Vicky and her death. Her death scene, you know, it kind of made me sad because I've I've always been a fan of uh, Virginia Gardner. I think that's her name. I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. But I've always been a fan of hers. And then you got, uh, Dave, which is Vicky's boyfriend. I'm not really sure who the actor's name is. I know his first name's Miles, but pretty much only there for comedic purposes and to die. Which you don't see his death, you don't see his death happen, but you see it, the aftermath. But we'll get to that. And you have Cameron, who is Allison's boyfriend slash ex-boyfriend. And this dude... This dude's like one of the only people that I really felt deserved to die in the movie. And I was kind of bummed out. Spoiler. Yeah, the spoiler review. He doesn't die. So, yeah, he's a real asshole. And I kind of would have loved to see him get the knife. Then you got Oscar, which is Cameron's friend. This dude, uh, also thrown in for comedic purposes. But I really like, I really liked his uh, his comedy in this one, and I really like the Easter egg of like when he breaks into the the household lot. There's a a line that he says, "Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Mr. Elrod, you know, Mr. Elrod, Halloween too, good shit." But Halloween, Halloween two is referenced pretty heavily throughout this film. And honestly, I don't mind. I like it. So, 
yeah, Oscar. Pretty much throwaway character, but he does his job well. He like he plays his role really well. And then there's there's a I know I'm kinda of getting into him late, but this dude is like one of my favorite characters in the movie. Uh Deputy Hawkins, which is played by Will Patton. Badass character. I like this dude. This is probably my favorite sheriff out of all the Halloween movies. And he wasn't even a sheriff. I like this dude better than Sheriff Brackett. I like this dude better than Sheriff Meeker. I like this dude better than the remake Brackett. He was just really cool and he wasn't even a sheriff. He was a deputy. But he was really great and I really was disappointed in how they killed him off. You know what? They're they're going to make a sequel to this movie, you know. It's 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 definitely going to happen. If it doesn't, then I'm okay with that. But he, I think he should have at least survived through to the next movie. He was just that good, and the way they killed him off was just bullshit. Then you got a uh, the new Doctor Loomis. His name is Doctor Sartain. I say the new Loomis because. He's he's Michael Myers' new psychiatrist, I guess. Psychiatrist, but he is he is his own character, and I'll get to that. Then you have the two podcasters or investigative journalists, Dana and Aaron, and uh, I'm not really sure who plays Dana, but I know Jefferson Hall plays Aaron. And these guys, I like them. You know, a lot of people say that they could have, you know, lasted a little bit longer in the film, but I think they were used used appropriately. I think they died at the right time. And their deaths were really shocking. And to be honest, I don't even think Aaron died. I think because you really don't see him die. Like, yeah, he's bleeding from his head, but he, you never really see him die. But, yeah, I like those characters. You know, they obviously try to bribe Laurie Schrode into, like, talking to Michael. Which doesn't work. And they offered her a shit ton of money. $3,000. And then you have the little kid that Vicky babysits. I know I'm probably missing some characters, but... To me, these were the characters that really, really mattered. Then you also have the sheriff, but... Fuck that. But uh, yeah, the little kid that babys uh, Vicky babysits, funny as fuck. <laughs> like, this dude, this dude is able to make me fucking laugh at <laughs> just like the little shit he says. And uh, he's even like fucking busting up jokes when Vicky's getting slaughtered. Which I, I do agree with most people that that did ruin like the, the intensity of that scene. But honestly, I don't care. He was just, he was great. And I hope he has a fucking bright future in Hollywood. Because I, I really, I really enjoyed his performance. Okay, so that was pretty much the characters. Um, most of them, I think they did their role really well. Okay, so Michael. I already talked about Michael. Michael's the one that I talked about first. But I kind of want to get into more depth. So Michael Myers in this movie, like I said, played by James Drew Courtney, did excellent in his job. He did ex excellent in the role. And, like I said, he's definitely my top three Michael Myers act actors. Michael in this one is brutal as fuck. And a lot of people will compete that Halloween 2's Rob Zombie, the remake, was more brutal. I call fucking bullshit. This dude is, you know, even though what he's lacking in height and maybe size, he was more fucking, he was stronger than Tyler Maine's Michael. And you can fucking fight me, you could call me fucking bad names through your cons computer or phone screen, but this Michael Myers was the most brutal yet. And I say that as... Anything, everything that this Michael Myers 
or Tyler Mains Rob Zombie Halloween 2 Michael Myers did. This Michael Myers did also. Like, there's the head stomp. There's the fucking... There's the bathroom scene. Because the first Rob Zombie Halloween movie had the bathroom scene. And this one just fucking... He brutalized the fuck out of them. And there's also the head stomp. Which, I mean, it took Tyler Mains Rob Zombie... Like, I think... I don't know, maybe like... Nine stomps. To, like, get this dude's head into mush. And don't fucking say that they were light stomps either. Because every time he fucking stomped, that camera rumbled and shit. Which signif signals that these were hard-ass fucking stomps. But James U. Courtney Michael Myers, looking down at Dr. Chartain, stomps his fucking head into mush with only one stomp. And it didn't even look like he put his full power into it. And let alone this, Michael Myers is once again fucking going around house to house murdering people. In just like the most vicious way. Grabbing a, ham a hammer, walking into someone's house and just first on, on fucking sight. Beating the shit out of them with a hammer. And clobbering them. Fuck. <laughs> and just like, and like the way he displayed the bodies as well. Like he fucking put... When he kills Oscar, he fucking stabs him in the back, lets him bleed out. Lets him fucking bleed. And then when Allison hears Oscar screams, she turns, and his fucking head is, his neck is impaled on the fucking gate that he gets stuck on, and the, the spike is coming out of his mouth. Great shit. Great fucking stuff. And then Michael Myers even fucking rips a guy's jaw out. I like... I, I will defend this fucking Michael Myers to the moon, and like, to the fucking moon and back, that, yeah, he was the most brutal Michael Myers we've ever had. He was great. He was definitely the, the perfect man for this job, and I fucking love him. And, number four, the kills. Already gone into depth while I was discussing Michael Myers. Kills in this movie, I think we're done perfectly. Also, adding to Michael Myers' brutality, it's just, like I said, some of the ways that he just prop the bodies, like display the bodies. I like the way that they execute the kills in this movie because mainly, I would say, about half of them are on screen and half of them are off screen. Like, you see the end result and you're forced to use your imagination, which sometimes can be even more brutal. Than what you have, you would actually see on the screen, unless you're fucking softy and then Michael Myers hits him with a pillow. But the kills in this movie were, yeah, gruesome, but I don't think they went overboard with the fucking like the brutality. A lot of people say maybe say like, oh, the original one had didn't have much blood at all. But guess what? This isn't the original one. It's a sequel to the original one. I know that they said that they were going to keep in tone with the original one, but you need blood to please today's audience. It just, it wouldn't fucking, it wouldn't work if you didn't have at least some blood. And, like, the bathroom scene where he fucking smashes Aaron's head into the wall in the stall. I think that was really smart. I think, I like the way that they used the blood in that movie, in that scene. Cause, and then you like when Aaron's lying against the wall, you you see the blood leak out. And it's just like shots like that. It's, I think that they're smart. I think they knew what they were doing. And then also for the first time, like successfully in the whole franchise, Michael Myers kills a kid. Uh, it's when the button, this kid and his dad find the bus crash. All the mental institution patients are like scattered around, and the dad gets out, doesn't come back. Kid gets worried, and Doctor Sartain's in that bus, and he shoots him, and you see blood come out, cause yes, there's blood in this movie, lots of it, and he runs back into his uh, car. Michael's in the back seat, strangles him, bashes his head, snap, dead. That shocked the fuck out of me, because this kid's probably like 12. 
and Michael Myers killed him. This is like the first time that they actually fucking, he actually killed a kid. So, yeah, there you got that scene and then the bathroom scene. And then my favorite fucking shot in the, the movie, like, holy shit. This scene, this scene was in mostly in one sequence, like they did one camera cut, one, one camera cut, but majority of the scene was just one frame, like one take. And that's the scene where Michael Myers is going around beating the fuck out of people. Just like in the trailer number two, you see uh, him walking down the driveway, grabs the hammer, goes inside, beats the fuck out of the chick, takes her knife. Then you hear a baby crying, and I swear the first, like the first, my first viewing, since Michael Myers killed that kid, you hear the baby crying. Literally everybody in the theater was like, "Oh shit, he's not gonna fucking go that far. He's not gonna fucking kill that that baby." And he stands right in front of the baby, and then everybody's just like flipping out, like they're like, "Oh no, I can't watch this. What if he actually, what if he actually fucking stabs the baby?" And he doesn't. He's not gonna fucking kill a baby. Walks outside. Stops. Stares at a chick waiting for her boyfriend. You know, outside of her car. Catches a glimpse, gets scared. Michael Myers turns his head. Goes in the house. Looks through the window. You see that badass reflection of him. Sneaks in, sneaks around. The chick finds out, you know, like, Michael Myers escaped and he could be in Haddonfield. Coincidentally, he's right fucking behind you. Grabs her hair, smashes it against the window, pulls it up, and quickly jabs the knife through her neck. Through her fucking neck. And you see the blade come out, and fuck. I just, that was my, that was my favorite shot of the entire movie. Because it was just so well done. So, it was great. And the rest is sort of like how I was saying. Like, you... It's mainly off-screen. Um, Vicky's death, which you see in the trailer. He pops out of the closet. Well, you do see her get slashed, and she appears to fight off Michael Myers. Obviously, Michael Myers is just, just too much. And he drags her. And then off-screen... You see him, like, stabbing the knife, but you don't see, like, the knife, like, enter Vicky. And, technically, uh, I was considered an off-screen kill. You do hear, like, scream, which, you know, is kind of sad. Because I do like that actress. And then, uh, also Dave hears the screams after fucking Julian. That's his name, Julian. After Julian fucking screams, he's like, Dave, don't go up there, you're gonna get fucking killed. He goes up there, and another Easter egg that I liked is that Dave actually picks up a knife similar to the H1 Lamson. And you don't see it. You don't. This is like what I'm talking about. You don't see him get killed. You don't hear him get killed. You only see the aftermath of, you know, when he's dead. And he's fucking pinned through a wall, pinned to a wall through his neck, sort of like reminiscence of how Bob got stabbed through the chest, but instead it's through the neck. Fucking great shit. <laughs> I fucking, I love that shot. I've always been sort of like a fucking, I've always loved like brutality in movies. And I do appreciate like, the fucking brutality that we got in this movie. Even though you don't see it, like it's just seeing the aftermath is good enough for me. And then obviously, like, you see, like, Michael Myers get shot. Like, Michael Myers stumbles a little bit, because, like, they said a couple, couple months, maybe even a year ago. Actually, I think they announced that Laurie Strode was back on the project a year and a month ago. But yeah, he stumbles because he's, he's more human. He's not, like, immortal. He's just driven by pure fucking evil. And then, uh, Oscar's death scene, which is, like I just described, was really brutal. You know, 
the whole fucking thing. And then, you know, also adding to fucking James G. Courtney being the most brutal Michael Myers, you got the scene where he fucking... He, you, don't, you don't see it, but you see the aftermath. He fucking carves a jack-o'-lantern in some dude's face and then beheads him. And his fucking partner, his throat is slashing, a pen knife is stuck in his head. And then his flashlight sticking up the fucking jack-o'-lantern head. And then, oh god, it's just so fucking... Like, reasons like that is why fucking this, my new Michael Myers is the most brutal. And then you got fucking Dr. Sartain who gets his head smashed into mush. Like, his fucking head gets stomped and his brains fly across the fucking, the blacktop, the road. And, you know, I do, I do fucking, I do appreciate, like, what they are going for. With, like, all the fucking displaying of the bodies and so I like that. You know, a lot of people are, like, pointing out that, wow, he fucking displayed those bodies really quick, sort of. Like, after Ray gets strangled, because he discovers the cop jack lantern head, and then Michael Myers chokes him with bells. And then, like, about five minutes after the whole fucking incident, you do see Ray's body laying on the ground. But then, like, as soon as Michael Myers breaks into the house, plus he also gets his fingers shot off, like, these two fingers. So, the rest of the movie, he's looking like this. And then, uh... At this point, Lori and uh, Karen are already at the house because, you know, they found some bodies. They found Vicky's body. So they're there. And then, like, within those couple of minutes of her going into the fucking little basement that they made, the basement fortress trap, whatever you call it, Michael Myers has found the time to drag Ray up the stairs and display his body. But other than that, I really fucking like the kills. They're 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 perfect. Okay. Now we talk about the score. And I know you're probably thinking, that's really fucking unprofessional, Jacob, looking at your fucking book while you're doing this review. Guess what? I'm trying to do the best I can for you fuckers, so stop judging me. The score. You know, like, just talking about this movie is making me smile like a little bitch, but... John Carpenter's score. Great. Great fucking God. To me, and probably a lot of people, the score makes up about... 50% of the movie, and his score is great in this movie. He works with his uh, son and godson, Cody Carpenter, and I'm not really sure what the godson's name is, but the score is a masterpiece. Like, there's literally songs that sent chills down my spine, and there's one song in particular that stuck out to everybody, and that is The Shape Stocks Allison. The Shape of Stocks Allison, or The Shape Hunts Allison, whatever. That song alone, a lot of people are saying it is John Carpenter's best track. And honestly, I can agree. That Hearing that song in the theater, and then hearing the kick drum, like that opening synthesizer, and then the kick drum, and then the, the bow electric guitar. Wow, everybody got pumped the fuck up. And then you got The Shape Burns, which... Spoiler, in a spoiler review, Michael Myers burns in this movie. And my, The Shape Burns is my favorite track. It is it is just so emotional. You know, mainly because I've been a Michael Myers fan all my life, and just watching them fucking burn, and that song coming on. And then pretty much just seeing that fucking Lori has, you know, finally defeated her demons. And, you know, came face to face with what's haunted her for 40 years and finally, like, being able to defeat it. I'm putting quotation marks because I don't believe Michael Myers is dead. You know, it was just, it was a really emotional and powerful scene. And then you have, uh, 
prison montage, which plays while Michael Myers is being transferred and Lori's watching from her pickup truck. That also, I love that one too. It was, the whole thing was just so great. I, I could talk about the score forever, but I got a fucking review to finish. But definitely, I bought it on CD. I'm trying to buy it on vinyl. But definitely check it out. Check out the score. Just listen to it, and you won't be disappointed. It's just, I, I really enjoyed it. So my favorite moments from this from the movie were yeah the kills. I really like the kills. And uh, I really like Michael Myers' performance. I love Jamie Lee Curtis's performance as Laurie Schrode. I think she probably gave off one of the best performances of her career. And definitely her best performance out of all the sequels. And also, I really liked... Uh, pretty much, I love the Halloween atmosphere that this movie had. You know, like... This movie rivals Halloween 4 for having, like, probably the best ha Halloween atmosphere. And then also, I really liked the opening credits. The opening credits were great. Because they brought back that blocky orange lettering. And also, they brought back the original pumpkin. But rather than it, you know, just being shown and then it zooming in and darkening out, the pumpkin rots and raises from its rotting state, and to me that was really like symbolic because that pretty much showed me that the franchise was back from the dead, and this is the film to bring that film back, like this franchise back from the dead, you know. And it just it was just so awesome. It was it was great. I loved it. And then that whole bathroom sequence. The whole bathroom sequence was intense as fuck. This whole movie, oh my god. My least favorite moments. I've already mentioned that I wasn't really a fan of Judy Greer in this movie. And also, like most people have pointed out, I don't mind the ending, but I felt like it could have been a little bit longer, and I kind of wish that they had the balls to carry out, kill off one of the strokes. You know, I'm sorry, but at least kill off Judy Greer. <laughs> at least kill off Judy Greer. You know, because I think that would have like added in a lot more emotion rather than just all three of them beating the fuck out of Michael towards the last couple of minutes left in the film. But I, that the whole ending sequence was suspenseful as fuck. But yeah, I, I felt like it happened too fast. And also, like, I really wish that they had, like, the balls to kill off one of the Strodes. You know, it doesn't even have to be Judy Greer. Because that'd probably be too predictable. So, pretty much, you know, my overall thoughts... I really fucking love this movie. And it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. I understand that. But for me, this was the Halloween film I've been waiting for. And it delivered on everything. And you might be saying, you know, like, oh yeah, you're like really fucking positive. But I, that's just how I am. I'm not really fucking judged. I'm not, I don't judge my films that much. Like, Pretty much what most people would find shitty, I actually enjoy. <laughs> that just sounds like really weird for me, but I actually really fucking love Halloween 5. But trust me, I'm not going to go as far as saying that I like Halloween Resurrection or Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Those are pieces of shit. But I do love Halloween 5. So, like, I'm more like of an open guy to the franchise. Like, I like shit that you know, some people would probably complain about. And for this film, I really, really loved it. I thought it was, in my opinion, I thought it was better than Halloween 2. I'm sorry, but, you know, maybe as time, you know, because maybe as time goes on, I'll, you know, change my mind, but as of this moment right now, I think this sequel is better than Halloween 2. And you might be saying, you know, Jacob, you're fucking stupid. You suck. 
you're a shitty reviewer, don't make fucking movie reviews again. But the thing was, it's my fucking opinion, it's not yours. I'm sorry, but it's just the way that I feel about this movie. I just, I loved it so much. God, I want to see it again. You know, pretty much everything from the kills and Michael Myers himself and Laurie Strode. Oh my god, it's, it was a great movie. So pretty much, if I were to give this movie a rating, I would give it a 9.5 out of 10. And the reason why I give it the 9.5 is because, yeah, the character of Judy Greer and the ending. But those are literally my only criticisms of this movie. The rest of it is pure gold. And I do fucking love the comedy in this one, too. Yeah, I sort of felt like it got in the way of some stuff, but for the most part, it had me laughing. It did the job. So yeah, 9.5 out of me. It's probably my second favorite Halloween film as of now, but who knows maybe with time it'll change, but I highly doubt it. I enjoyed this movie you know, more and more throughout each watch. And pretty much the last things I'm going to say about Halloween 2018 is watch it, watch it again, listen to the score, and go into it not expecting, you know, this movie to be like any of the sequels, because it's not. Go into it with an open mind. And just go in there and have a good time watching it. So, no, it took a while, and, you know, it took me some time to actually, like, start reviewing this movie, but I loved it. Nine years waiting for this movie paid off, and I'm just, I'm so happy that this finally happened after being disappointed year after year after year. And then, you know, we finally have this one, and paid off. So, you know, thank you for watching the vlog and watching me fanboy, even throughout this review. I love you guys. You know, subscribe. And I can't believe that, you know, I'm not going to have any more Halloween shit to talk about until the sequel. Take care, guys. Love you guys. Later.